Hi, this is CAD CAM Lessons. In this part of the FreeCAD series, we'll turn a simple box into a practical part using thickness to hollow it, draft text to create an engraving, and a datum plane to mirror features when standard planes don't work. You'll also learn how to move draft-based geometry into the active body so part design can use it. We will now move on to the next example. I will create a new project as a parametric part, and here I will start by creating a sketch on the XY plane, I will draw a rectangle with dimensions of 100 by 70 millimeters. And based on this rectangle, I will create a solid with a height of 50 millimeters. Okay, we have such a box. Now I select this edge and choose the chamfer operation. As the chamfer dimension, I enter 30 millimeters and click OK. And now regarding creating sketches, you already know that we can create sketches on the basic coordinate system planes, and you know that we can create sketches on solid faces. But these faces do not have to be perpendicular or parallel to the coordinate system planes. They can be slanted faces, it is important that the face is flat. We cannot create a sketch on a cylindrical face, but if the face is flat we can create a sketch on such a face, and this face can be at any angle. And now, if we select this face and choose Create Sketch, this face is the sketch plane. Here we can use the create external geometry command and draw some geometry. I will create a center rectangle here and check the rounded corners option. And draw a rectangle with dimensions of 50 by 25 millimeters with a corner radius of 5 millimeters. I click the right mouse button to cancel this command. I select this point, I select this point, I select this point and choose the symmetry constraint. I close the sketch, and now based on this sketch I can create another solid fragment, for example something like this. Or I undo this operation, and based on this sketch I can create a pocket in the solid. And so step by step, Combining these basic operations, we can create a 3D solid. Now if, for example, you needed to create another sketch, you can use this face, and on this face, you can create another solid fragment. So we can start from a very simple shape, and by adding subsequent operations, we can build an increasingly complex 3D model. And okay, that was just a short piece of information, and now we will move on to the next project. Here in this case, I will use this solid we created at the beginning. I will remove these operations, and we have something like this. And another interesting operation that can be useful in some cases is the thickness operation. And this operation creates a solid with walls of a specific thickness. It works such that we indicate the face that we sort of want to remove. We select the thickness operation. And here we specify the wall thickness that is to remain. I entered 3 millimeters here, and we can create this thickness sort of inwards into the solid, or if we uncheck this, the solid will be enlarged. I will check this option, click OK, and in this way, we created such a box. I will undo this operation. Regarding the thickness operation for this operation, we can select several faces with the control key. In this case, I select these two faces. I select the thickness operation, I enter a wall thickness of 3 millimeters. I click OK, and now these two faces have been removed, so this is another operation that can be useful in some cases. I will undo this operation, and here based on this solid we will do another project. I select this edge, I select the chamfer operation, I enter 30 millimeters as the chamfer dimension, I click OK. Now with the control key, I select these two faces. I select the thickness operation, and as the wall thickness, I enter 3 millimeters and click OK. And now I will show you how you can create a text on a solid face, and we will do this in another module. We create text in the draft module. Switch to the draft module. Here we have many other tools that can be useful, but at this moment we will focus on creating a text. And now like this, I want to create a text on this face, so I select this face and click this button to set the working plane on this face. Next, I select the Shape from Text command. This command allows us to create a text. And here we enter the text that will be created. 
Here we specify the height of this text and here we indicate the font file. If you click this button, you can indicate the font file, you can use system fonts, or you can indicate some other file in TTF format. Regarding the position and height of the text, we will be able to change this later. Therefore, at this moment, these settings are not so very important. Regarding the position, we can click more or less in this spot so that it is the starting point where the text will be created, and we click OK, and now the text has been created. And regarding the height of this text, it is OK, but the position of the text does not suit me. Therefore, I select this text in the feature list. I go here to Properties, expand the Placement Arrow Position option, and here we can change the position of this text a bit to adjust it. OK, it can be more or less something like this, and we have a text on the solid face. And now at this moment, this text is a shape string geometry. And if you would like to create a solid based on this geometry, we can approach this in two ways. We can change this text into a sketch and later simply use it as geometry for the pocket operation or for the pad operation in the part design module. And to change such a text into a sketch, we select this text here in the feature list and now select the option that allows changing draft module geometry into a sketch. It is the draft to sketch option. And this option is also in the drop down menu. If you expand the modification drop down menu, we have the draft to sketch option here. We select this option and now a sketch has been created based on this. I select this geometry press space to hide it, and here we have a sketch, and we will be able to use this sketch in the part design module. However, if we now go to the part design module, and now if based on this sketch you want to apply some solid operation, for example the pad operation, a warning will appear, and there is information that we cannot use this sketch. And this is what I talked about at the beginning. We have a body element here, and the body element defines one single solid, and if we work on this element, on the body element, then all geometries we use should also be inside this body element. This sketch at this moment is outside this body, and to use this sketch to create a solid operation on this solid, we must move this sketch to the active body. To do this, we simply do it by drag and drop. We drag the sketch to the active body. Once this sketch jumped into the body, now we can use this sketch, and based on this sketch, we can create another solid fragment. OK, and we have something like this, or I undo this operation, and based on this sketch, we can create a pocket in the solid. I click OK. And we have something like this. Now I will undo this operation. I will leave this sketch here. And here you might also notice that such a symbol appeared, and this means that the model needs to be recomputed. Sometimes this recomputation is not necessary because the model will recompute itself later in the next step. But sometimes when we do something and perform a few steps, then undo a few times, it is worth recomputing this model because it might turn out that we undid a few steps too far, or a few steps too little. Therefore, if this symbol appears, simply sometimes it is worth clicking the model recomputation button. And okay, we have this sketch. I will hide this sketch, and now we have a shape string element here. And based on this element, we can also perform a solid operation in the part design module. And to do this, we also need to drag this element to the body element. And now we can use this to create another solid fragment. Here I also wanted to show you that this element created in the draft module can be changed into a regular sketch, because now if I double click on this element, I can change the position of this element here. I can introduce some changes here, but it is not a regular sketch that we create in the part design module, whereas this element, this sketch, is a regular sketch and we can edit this sketch and sometimes this can be useful for something. Here, as you can see, this geometry is not constrained and grabbing a point can completely destroy this geometry, but we can introduce some changes and this element is simply a regular sketch that we can edit, so this can also be a big advantage in some cases. Another thing that might catch your attention at this moment is this grid that appeared here. This grid was not here before, and this grid can appear when we use the draft module, and we can also turn off this grid in the draft module. 
I don't know if it's possible to turn off the visibility of this grid from the part design module level. I always do it in such a way that I switch to the draft module. And here is a command that allows turning off the grid visibility and this grid is already invisible and does not obscure the view. Okay, based on this sketch, I will create a pocket in the solid with a depth of one millimeter. Okay. And since we are on this example, I will create subsequent fragments of this solid here. We will simply make this into a box that we can hang, for example, on a workshop board. I will add edge fillets here. I select this edge and select this edge. And here I define the radius value, for example, 20 millimeters. Okay. And now I will create a sketch on this face. And I will do it such that I draw two circles. The first circle with a diameter of 5 millimeters. And the second circle with a diameter of 10 millimeters. Okay. I click the right mouse button to cancel this command. And now I select draw line and draw a line from this point to this circle so that this line is a vertical line. And if it won't be a vertical line, we will straighten it right away. And here I also drew a line whose start lies on this circle and end lies on this circle. I click the right mouse button to cancel this command. And I select this line and choose the horizontal vertical constraint so that this line is a vertical line. Now I select this point, select this point, and choose this constraint again to place these two points in one vertical line. And here, this constraint is the horizontal vertical constraint. And this constraint will be applied. That is, either the horizontal constraint or the vertical constraint will be applied, and the one that is simply closer will be applied. I will show you this with an example now. I have one line like this, and I have one line like this, and I will create one more or less like this. I click the right mouse button, and now I select this line and choose the horizontal vertical constraint. And here a constraint specifying that this line is a horizontal line was applied. Now I select this line and choose the same constraint. And here in this case, FreeCAD applied a constraint specifying that this line is a vertical line. But regarding this line, here we are not entirely sure. In this case, FreeCAD happened to apply that this line is a horizontal line, but if you wanted this line to be a vertical line, you can simply use the vertical constraint here. We select this constraint, indicate the line, and now we simply manually indicated that we want this line to be a vertical line. Okay, I click the right mouse button to cancel this. I select these geometries, I press backspace or delete to remove these geometries, and here we will add more dimensions and constraints. Here we have a tangency constraint between this point and the circle. Here we don't have this constraint, so I select this line, select the circle, and choose the tangency constraint. Okay, and now like this, I select this point, I select this point, I press the D key, and here as the dimension value, I enter 10 millimeters. Okay. I don't know why the dimension lines are invisible in this view. Okay, now everything is visible. And now we will also define the distance of the center point of this hole from the edge of the solid. For this purpose, I select the external projection command. I indicate, for example, this edge. I click the right mouse button, and I select this point. I select this point, I press the D key, and here is the distance I enter 15 millimeters and I select this point, I select this point, and here in this axis, as the distance I enter 10 millimeters, I click the right mouse button to cancel the dimensioning command, and here I will also use the trim edge command and trim fragments of the circle so that it is a sketch like this. I close this sketch, and based on this sketch I will create a pocket, and here as the pocket type I select to first, and click OK, and we have something like this. Now I would like to create a mirrored copy of this hole so that it appears on the opposite side of the solid. If you try to mirror the pocket feature, you'll notice we don't have a suitable mirror plane that would place this hole on the opposite side of the solid. In this case, the mirror tool can use only the default coordinate system planes. However, 
This model was created with its corner located at the origin, so none of those default planes works as a symmetry plane for this hole. As a result, we can't use mirror to create the hole on the other side of the solid without defining an appropriate mirror plane first. For this purpose, we need an additional plane that will serve us as a mirror plane, and we can easily create such a plane. We can do it such that we select this face, then with the control key, we select this face, and we will create a plane that will lie between these faces. And it is important that if you want to create such a plane that is to lie between faces, these two faces we indicate must be the same. If there were any differences between these faces, this plane would not be created correctly. And I will show you this with an example in a moment. But now like this, we select these two faces. I select the datum plane command here. And this plane at this moment was created in this way, but we have rotation options here, and we can rotate this plane, for example, in the x-axis by 90 degrees. And now this plane lies between these faces. We click OK, and we will use this plane as the mirror plane. First, I deselect these faces by clicking an empty space. Next, I select the feature I want to mirror. I select the mirror operation. And here as the mirror plane, I select the Select Reference option and indicate this plane. And we have something like this. I click OK, and this way we've created a mirrored copy of the whole. And regarding construction planes, we can also create sketches on such planes, and this is useful in some cases. And in the further part of this training, we will use construction planes a few more times. And now I will move on to the next example and show you what I told you a moment ago. That is, if we create a construction plane that is to be between two faces, these two faces must be the same, because if they are not the same, if there is some minor difference, the plane will not be created correctly. Now you can sketch on angled faces, hollow solids with thickness, add text as real geometry, and mirror pockets using a custom datum plane. To see the next step, click the video on the screen or subscribe, and continue the full series in the playlist.